So welcome everyone to today's event. My name is Sam um, and I am from Prospel and we're helping to, turn, um, to, to host today's event. Um, with me today, I've got Lowry, Jenny and Tom from ACT Public Service. Um, before we go any further though, I would like to acknowledge and pay respects to the traditional custodians of the land. Um, for, for me here in the city of Melbourne, that is the Wurundjeri and the Boon Wurrung peoples. Um, I'd also like to pay respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Um, but with, yeah, with me today, as I mentioned before, we've got Larry, Jenny and Tom from the ACT Public Service. I'm sure you've all got some really great questions that you've been thinking about the last little while. Um, and so feel free to start getting them into the chat function if you can. It's right down the bottom there. But without further ado, I might throw to Larry to do a bit of a quick intro to herself and, and, and the wider ACT Public Service. Hi, everyone. Um, my name's Lori Grice, and I'd just like to also um, acknowledge the traditional custodians on the land of which I'm currently sitting, actually, here in the ACT, who are the Ngunnawal people. And I'd like to um, acknowledge and respect their elders, past, present and emerging, and also say um, hello and respect to everybody who's joining us here today, including Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. So, um, yeah, we've, uh, well, welcome to this session. We're so excited to be here with you all and tell you about our wonderful service. So we are the ACT uh, Public Service Graduate Program and we have, um, I'm director of that program and um, I have a couple of member of my team here and also a past graduate. So they'll like, introduce themselves in a second. Um, but yeah, I just like to say that um, I'm really Really proud to work for the ACT Public Service actually. We are a unique jurisdiction so we are both a, a, a state level government and a local government which means that the work we do is really really connected with the community that we live in and that we see every day as we travel to work and around our communities. So that's my headline and um, I'll pass to Jenny to say hello now. Oh, hello everyone, I'm Jenny McKee. I'm part of the graduate team, so I work on the administrative side of the graduates. I'd just like to say for me, working in the ACTPS is all about working within your own community and actually seeing results from the work you're doing. As Larry just said, we are very unique in that we are jurisdiction and that we can really see the results of our work. So welcome everyone and really looking forward to this session and seeing, next, seeing some of you next year. Now I'll talk, hand you over to Tom Doyle. He's one of our previous graduates from previ in the previous year. Tom? Hey guys, how's everyone going? Um, so yeah, I was a grad in the 2018 cohort and I moved down from Sydney, um, which was a bit daunting, but um, I love Canberra now. It's a great place to live. Um, and working for the ACT government's been an absolutely amazing experience. Um, you know, my personal values quite closely align with the government, which is excellent, um, which is a bit different from the federal government. I know with uh, a few friends of mine, they have a, a few differing views. Um, so that makes it a bit easier to get involved with the work. Um, and then this year, I actually supervised a grad. Um, so yeah, it's been a couple of years in the public service and having that opportunity was, was uh, um, yeah, pretty nice actually. It, was, it sort of did a 180. So yeah, it's been a, a great experience, and um, I've made a lot of great relationships, both professional um, and personal ones that I've sort of taken outside of work. So yeah, I highly recommend working um, in the ACT public service. And yeah, when applications open, I'd strongly encourage you to place one in. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks, Tom. And I should probably, sorry to cut you off there, Sam. That's I was right. just going to talk to that last point. So um, I should probably just uh, sort of talk to what um, the last point uh, that Tom made there around applications opening. So uh, we are a little later this year, and that is due to some improvements we're making to our technical process behind the scenes, which is about um, how you can lodge applications. So we're making um, a, quite a big change. Actually, we've done it quite manually in the in years past. 
and we're um, looking to make some streamlining and some improvements. But as you know, these are uh, properly designing a really good experience for you to lodge your application it takes a long time. And we had to get the right provider in place, which we have now. And so we, we're looking to open, uh, open applications, um, certainly within the next month, but we'd encourage you to just keep uh, your eye on not only Grad Australia, but our own website as well. Awesome. Thanks, Larry. Um, and yeah, just to let everyone know that post post the event, we'll make sure to let you know when those applications open as well. You'll be the first to hear. So thanks. Thanks for joining. And thanks for the um, bit of the quick introduction to the ACT Public Service and yourselves. Um, I reckon now we'll jump into the main part of the event, which is the question time, uh, which I'm questions are already coming in thick and fast. There's a few people asking me to read out. So I hope others people who are happy to read out Put their name in there too i'm sure not everyone wants to hear from me all day but i'll talk away um, as much as needed uh, and i might actually start with um and, and apologies in advance for pronunciation i am terrible um but i'll start here first with guan min um and the question is what is the ratio of applicants and the number of job vacancies um at ACT public service particularly prepared last year was the um is the base year that they've got here um okay like I can the, answer that one. Yeah. Uh, so we had 1,500 applications last year and we have 72 graduates this year. Yeah. So for those analytics experts amongst you, <laughs> maybe somebody could type the answer of what the ratio there. Um, but yeah, that's, those are the stats from last yeah. year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pretty good. Like, oops, sorry, I was going to say, sorry. have you confirmed, is it pretty consistent year on year as well about that? thousand fifteen hundred ish mark 70. the um we certainly received more than we did uh the the year before is it received more applications that was and we've certainly got a bigger cohort so the cohort's grown by about 70 percent yep. from 2019 mm -hmm. um and we're looking to i noticed that there was a couple of people who'd asked about what sort of you know job number of job vacancies that had that, had, that were identified we're looking to have around the same size cohort again, if not a little larger. So we're really lucky in the ACT. Um, our chief minister has prioritised um, youth employment uh, directly as a result of uh, COVID-19 and in acknowledgement that um, the pandemic economically disadvantaged young people as a group, perhaps more than others. And so um, it, the, the government actually has provided funding to, has allocated funding to for, for the growth of the graduate program. So that is something we're very much looking uh, looking at doing again next year. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll probably have around the same cohort size, if not a little larger. Yeah. I'm loving the um, the stats chat in the in the in, in the in the chat right now. There's a bit of debate oh, going on about it. the percentage. Five percent. Yeah, about five percent. There we go. Um, Fantastic. I, Thank I, I, you, Christopher, yeah. Daniel, yeah. Joshua. <laughs> 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 but I, I don't think that should like that that should let you you know that should stop you from applying, right? Like Mary, and it, you just because it Absolutely. might be a five percent, like should they stop? Uh, like you know, should they be nervous about that? Absolutely not. If you are if you've got a values alignment with our um, with our organisation, then and this is somewhere you feel that you can belong and you can make a contribution and make a difference, then that will come across. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I'm going to throw next to Vladimir's question, which is on the topic of applications and like. Um, what is the main features, both professional and personal, that you're looking for in a potential candidate? Good one for Jenny or Larry, really. <laughs> I can happily take that one again if you like. Um, so we have um, we have a number of professional uh, streams or technical streams uh, that we have um, identified. Um, they are along al along lines of some broad skill streams. So technically, um, within those streams, we're looking for, um, you know, some certain qualifications, but also there are generalist streams for people who have um, public policy and governance and law qualifications. Um, but just in terms of capability, I think, is probably what you're asking about. Um, more more about those um, those future ready 
um, capabilities. I think the what we're looking for is people who can um, begin to work independently, who can think um, about what they uh, are working on. You can jump in here if you want, Tom. Uh, I think you we need we need people who are obviously um, whose values align with our own values. So they that so those values are respect, integrity, collaboration, and innovation. So. Um, we, we welcome applications from people who can demonstrate to us that they uh, also care about making a difference in their community and that they are open to learning and continuous learning um, when they when they come to work for us. Yeah. Have you got anything to add, Tom? Well, yeah. Um, I think critical thinking skills are also quite important um because mm. the nature of the public service is that it's um very dynamic and fast-paced and particularly last year um with COVID-19 hitting us like a freight train in um early on in the year um everyone had to adapt um and get used to new ways of working and new ways of collaborating so um yeah being able to adapt and um, innovate in those sort of situations, those skills are quite handy to have. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. I might throw to, might skip ahead. I, I'll come back to some of the questions that are there as well, but I might skip ahead to Patrick. Um, Patrick Griffiths, who said he's happy to take himself off mute and ask the question, but it, it's something that seems to be a bit of a common theme about streams. Um, Patrick, are you. Yeah, no, I'm here. Uh, yeah, awesome. Exciting, someone else talking. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you kind of touched on this a bit earlier, Larry, but I was um, wondering if you'd finalised the graduate streams yet, and if so, could tell us what they are, because I think that's <laughs> what everyone wants to know, really. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, they are not yet finalised, but I can certainly tell you what they are broadly, and the reason, I'll just tell you why they're not finalised quite yet. So we um, ask directorates because we um, use a workforce planning model. We ask directorates what roles are most needed for their business to be able to deliver their business because we see this program as a pipeline of talent and certainly a pipeline of leadership. So what we want to know from business areas is, okay, what critical skills do you need in order to be able to deliver your business in the next five years? And they tell us that and that's what informs the development each year. So it's redeveloped each year from what the graduate streams are going to be. So just with that bit of background, that I can tell you that there will certainly be um, streams for law, public policy and governance. Um, there will certainly be streams for analytics. There will be a stream for um, engineering for architecture or urban planning there will be a human services stream which is about um they they are, they work in social um care models so they would be your child psychologists and your social workers uh what have i missed out jenny let's do you want to take yourself off me sorry um, I think I've covered, I think I've covered them. Certainly ICT roles as well. Sorry. So am I, am I answering your question, Patrick? Hang on just a second. Let me just um, see if I've missed any out. You've, you know, you've covered plenty of them, I think. Um, <laughs> I was interested in the law one, so you covered that first. So Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, and let me just say, though, that's a really good point. Um, what we find is that people um, people do apply and they want a very specific and quite a, um, a narrow application in the, in the law um, field. We are a program that, that welcomes people with law degrees and certainly the transferability and the p applicability of, the, of those qualifications are great for lots of public service work. But we aren't actually a program which provides 
pure law practicing roles okay so if that's what you're looking for you're better off looking at um, the um, the director of public prosecutions has a, an annual graduate intake for law graduates so if your um, if your intention is to practice then probably we would probably not the program that you are looking for but in a wider sense in terms of the transferability of your of your um, qualification if you are looking at policy role a governance role a legislative um, practice a legislative design and, and development role we have those roles in our in our programs does that answer your question yeah it does thanks okay uh, let's have a look while Just... we're on the topic of streams as well uh while yes. you're sort of getting that one up there are a couple of questions here um oh sorry oh, I, I forgot my own stream sorry oh, right. <laughs> which is sorry i'm just <laughs> human resources <Yeah. laughs> so so i'll just go through them for you so very broadly um and these are just being finalized like i said but very broadly we will have an infrastructure stream which as i mentioned is about architecture it's about urban planning um a human services stream which is about um the social work aspect that i that i spoke about law public policy and governance which i've just referred to analytics um which are which is um fairly self-explanatory for all of those analysts there but this will be data science and um and analytics um information technology so ict uh commerce and business um so that would be uh, your um, business administration and we would also have communication stream and uh, human resources so that's um, industrial relations and employee relations as well as strategic human resources okay and for the streams there's a question a couple mm -hmm. of questions here very similar ones um, Nick asks can they graduates up uh, like nominate for their preferred stream when they're applying absolutely yes yeah. and can they apply for multiple streams as well they can um but they're going to have to make a decision at one point or another <laughs> that they they will be able to yes yeah, yeah. awesome um yeah. cool i might um is there a limit to how many they can apply for is the other question i've got here while we're on that i think we we need to work with our provider on our portal and remember how we saying i was um we were Still working updating. and getting the, the yeah and getting the um the 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 system it to be a to be a great system but um last year you were able to choose two yeah awesome yeah um, yeah cool um there's a another question here from nick um who asked will new graduates rotate jobs during the grad program Essentially, rotate across streams or even within the stream. Absolutely, yeah. So um, we this year um, have kept it fairly stream based, um, but what we offer as part of our program is three workplace rotations. Um, the first one is slightly longer than the other two, but what that means is that you will start working in your role that you will essentially be coming back to your own role, and then you'll be able to move to a different directorate. Um, using the skills that you have, experience what it's like working some, somewhere totally different. Um, and then you will get, and then for your third rotation, you will come back to your home directorate, but not in the same job you started in. So then you, when you finish the program, you will return to the first place you, you started. So that's the, that's the way we, we do it. And I think Tom probably can talk to the diversity of, um, experiences that maybe you had in your in your graduate program year through that rotation system yeah so it was structured a bit differently back in 2018 um so i was in the business commerce stream and in my first rotation um i was in a project officer role um in a unit called publishing services so primarily responsible for print production um and then i moved across to corrective services um, which falls under the Justice and Community Safety Directorate. Um, and that was a really interesting experience. So I worked as a data analyst and uh, data reporting uh, and analysis. I worked in that space. Um, and then in my third rotation, I moved into the division that I'm still currently with. Um, 
So that's in the communications and engagement division. Um, and I worked on the development of uh, the ACT's first online insights community, which is now named the Your Say Community Panel. Um, so that was a, a really interesting project to sink my teeth into. And now I think it's got nearly 5,000 um, members from the ACT community on it. Um, and the research done on that panel is used to um, inform the policy um, decision making process. So it's a really important um, panel. It was an excellent project to work on. So you can really work on a, a massive variety of different projects and very different roles and um, also had some additional experiences outside of those roles. So working on the 25th um, anniversary of the public service, we worked on organising a few events for that. Um, and then I think towards the end of our program, we also worked on a grad project. Um, and we worked with one of the, the executives on that too. So yeah, there were some really amazing opportunities that I was presented with during the program. Awesome, thanks Tom. Um, next question I might ask is from another great one from Grant Wing. Um, which is how often do grads attend um, public service exclusive workshops or any sort of development workshops by the sound of it, um, particularly people from other maybe uh, agencies within the public service or even federal government departments as well. Um, is there a couple of examples you can share on that as well, potentially? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, sorry, was that to Tom? Oh, for anyone, really. Um, oh. Whoever knows the most. <laughs> So um, this probably wouldn't have changed too much since your time, Tom, um, but the graduates this year are working on a diploma of government and they meet uh, for blocks of trading. Um, they, I think they get a recall. I think the recall is um, three days a week every two months and they're together as a cohort for that. So they get to catch up with their cohorts, a very strong um, connection and a network that they have together. Um, so we also do in between that we do sort of development sessions for them. So they had a they had a speaker series um, event with the ACT Young Australian of the Year, and we also had we've got a, a, a speaker series event planned with the head of service and the chief minister. So yeah, those things are very much what we're what we um, what we like to do to keep. Um, to keep our grads sort of interested, but also to add to their development, yeah. If you want to add to that, Tom, in terms of what you experienced when you went, went through the program? Sorry, you um, it was a bit. a bit different in 2018. So we didn't do a diploma of government. Um, we just did training sessions with uh, CIT. Um, but we also, we did have a speaker series too. So we heard from Kathy Lee, the head of service, um, Chief Minister Andrew Barr and a few other people uh, at a sort of higher level in the ACT public service. And I think it's good to hear from those people because you can sort of get an understanding of where they started, you know, post university and how they got to the position that they currently find themselves in. Awesome. Um, next question. Um, I might get um, uh, throw to, sorry, I'm going back up. Um, there's a question here from Hal um, about the types of opportunities in the IT space, particularly. Um, and all, there's also a follow-up part of that question is, you know, what co future career progression opportunities are there in IT, within the ACT public service? Maybe even, I could, you can be a bit quite broad as well, Larry, if you want to um, discuss. Yeah, um, well, I'll sort of tackle the first part of the question. Um, in terms of IT, um, it's critical skills that have been uh, sort of identified as being um, very important for the development of our service. Um, IT, IT security is something that um, is a very hot topic and also uh, software development skills have been identified. Um, so in terms of career development, I think more broadly, that's probably a question, um, you know, 
for our graduate program, we are just looking to um, evaluate essentially the success. But anecdotally, what we find is that our graduates um, are a mobile bunch. They they begin with that network in the early days of their career. They really build it um, f through connections with with each other, but also because of the rotations that they do. Um, and they're able to move around the service a lot, which exposes them to some really great experience. And so what we find is that um, anecdotally their, um, their mobility is greater. And even if they move sideways, that career path, those career paths are um, really, uh, really rewarding in, in terms of being able to gather that experience and then move up through the levels. Yeah. Cool. Um Next question here is regards to PhD student applications from Trang, and I think Hester had a similar um, question here. Um, is there any different requirement for students with a PhD um, degree rather than a, just an undergraduate degree? Um, like as such, for example, a, a PhD program usually doesn't, wouldn't actually have an ap academic transcript for the most part. Um, and are they too old to apply as a follow-up on, on that as well? Okay. A couple of questions. Uh, there, sorry. Oh, I'll answer that. No, no, no yeah. that's fine. Um, I'll answer the last one first. No, you're not <laughs> too yeah. old to apply, and no one's too old to apply. There's no, uh, there's no age limit. Um, what we would just need to see is um, just evidence of, of the completion of your qualification. So we take the um, the completion date of your last qualification. So it wouldn't need to be. So even if you completed your PhD um, last year and then your undergraduate degree was ten years ago. Um, we would take the latest qualification. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and, and in short, you, you're happy to accept, date. you're ha happy to accept PhD applicants is the absolutely option. yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. perfect. Yeah. Um, hopefully that answers the questions there about the eligibility of um, PhD and the like. Let me know in the chat for anyone who was interested in that, rather than not you want to cover more. Um, but I might throw next to Lian Chen. Um, I actually had two questions, and one of which you're happy to read out. Did you want to jump off mute to ask them both, perhaps? Yeah, I'm happy to do that, Sam. Awesome. Um, so, hi. So, I'm from Sydney, and I was wondering whether we would be given relocation assistance because the website says that it's made on a case by case basis. Hi, Leanne. Yes. Hi. Um, we, hi. We, we certainly do have the uh, relocation um, allowance that's be, that um, is, would be part, if you were successful, that would be part of your terms and conditions of employment. Um, we have very generous and fantastic terms and conditions here. And so, yes, if you were relocating, um, you, you, would be, you would have an allowance to, to be able to move your stuff and get temporary accommodation while you needed to look for a place and, and that stuff. Yeah, if you were successful, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, my second question is that I think, Lowry, you mentioned that the ACT Public Service works closely with the federal agencies. So I was wondering whether graduates would be given the opportunity to work with federal agencies as well. Um, at the moment, uh, no, we we don't um, we don't uh, second out. I, I think that's what you're maybe asking about. So there's no there's no rotation into a federal government agency. But we're looking to strengthen those links. Actually, um, we're just we're just working through how we might do that. But at the moment, um, our directorates and our kind of business needs within our service are, are, are so diverse, and also they're very pressing. <laughs> you know, we we our business areas really do love their grads when they come you know that because they are working on really meaningful work that kind of um is very needed so they so they don't want to let them go <laughs> to a federal government um department but what we we would be looking at in future is how to partner with perhaps some of those more specialist streams um with the the federal government who are who are sort of beginning to start run starting to run um as you'll know from from your research probably some quite specialist streams for just for hr people or just for it people so yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to skip ahead because we're on this topic a little bit of public 
ACT versus, well, I mean, averse, but like the difference with the federal government. Um, there's a question from Byron, which is exactly that. Yeah, you know, what are some of the benefits in working for the ACT public service compared to the APS? Uh, and I'll come back to the other questions, but while we're on the topic, I wanted to jump onto that. Um, look, Tom, I think this might be a good one for you. Um, to start answering, I can get uh, I can get quite animated about this one. So why don't you? Would you like to give us your thoughts about the difference? I don't know whether you could talk to the difference to working for the the uh, Australian Public Service as opposed to the ACT government. Um, but perhaps you you could give us your thoughts on that. Yeah. Well, I suppose the first thing is it's not really related to um, like the working conditions, but. One of the major benefits for me is that you can see the work that you do within the community, whereas mm -hmm. at the federal level, um, you're a bit removed from that because you could be working on a project that's based in northern WA, which is like the other side of Australia. Um, in terms of the conditions, I think we only have to do seven hours and 21 minutes a day and they have to do longer hours. So that's one benefit. <laughs> um, uh, I'm trying to think what else is there um in, in terms, terms of, of it, the, sorry no no i was just in terms of it being quite hands-on i think that's the main yeah. difference to, for me would you would you agree yes yeah i'd say that um because i've heard like um at the federal level it's quite i'd say it's a bit more bureaucratic so like the executives in the act public service they're very um uh, like you're welcome to approach them to ask them questions about whatever it may be. Um, and it's a bit more horizontal in terms of the structure um, of directorates and, and different agencies. So, um, yeah, you, never, you, you don't really need to be afraid to approach anyone and have a conversation with them mm -hmm. about the work that you're doing, which I think is a really um, positive thing. It's a really good point about workplace culture, I think, having worked in both. Um, I, I think the ACT public service is a less noticeably hierarchical place to work. Yeah. I think, um, as you say, we've got some, we work with some very, very senior people and um, we get airtime with those people um, when needed. And it's a very respectful workplace in that way. Um, and also just a very, um, having that chance to work with senior leaders so closely is an enormous development, a development sort of opportunity. And I've certainly, um, in my time in the ACT Public Service, I've been, um, I've been very lucky to work with some very senior people very closely, and um, and that's been, and that's been fantastic. And I'm not sure in the larger public, you know, Australian public service departments whether you would actually get that um, and certainly the vibe is very much um, a more of a hierarchical um, sort of situation going on from my from my own experience anyway yeah 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 and I've had several leaders say to me and um, the teams that I've been in that they want to see you do as well as you possibly can and grow and develop um, and and reach your goals and get to um, a level that you like to, to get to which I think is mm. really amazing um, and, you know, I know from friends in the APS that they haven't had those conversations or, or speeches from their leaders. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think the, the work culture is a really positive one and um, it's definitely helped me to, to seek out really amazing opportunities, which has been awesome. Fantastic. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, Next, there's a couple of questions here in regarding to affirmative um, measures applications, mm -hmm. Larry, um, whether, yeah. uh, particularly for First Nation people, um, yeah. but, but across, across the board. Can you talk a little bit more about that, if you can? So um, we we call the um, these positions identified positions, um, and we're just working through how many there will be. But actually, we it, it's it's a bit more of a broader point. Um, to be honest, we welcome applications from um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and people with disability, and from um, people from different. Um, national backgrounds and the LGBTIQ community also. Um, I think we are 
an incredibly diverse service and um, there is certainly work to that is going on to um, refresh our diversity and inclusion agenda but I think just in terms of the support that we have available uh, within our program for people who um, identify as people with disability with the largest cohort that we've ever had um, of, of people with disability um, and I think it's um, a testament to our workplace culture. We're also, um, uh, you know, we've, we've got many, um, all of our directorates have reconciliation action plans. We're a proud employer um, of 2% um, of our workforce um, are Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, which here in the ACT is around about the same representation of the um, community that we have. And I think that um, whilst, there, yes, there will be identified positions, we absolutely want to have a, as many applications from as many diverse, um, you know, um, as many diverse applications as we possibly can, um, because that will strengthen our service. So that's very much the, the position that we have on that. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, hopefully that answers the questions about the, that um, affirmative measures areas as well. Feel free to let us know if you'd like any further clarity on that as well. That was um, great context there, Larry. Um, in terms of, as you, the next question is from, um, apologies again for any mispronunciation, but Naina. Um, and the question is, is the grad program an ongoing role within the ACT public service? Yes, it is. Um, when you are offered a role in the ACT public service, you uh, or on the on the graduate program, it's um, you will be offered a permanent uh, position, and um, at the time you will be able to make a decision about what it, what the role is that you are accepting, and for the duration of the of the program, you will be known as a graduate. Um, but then when you um, graduate uh, our program, you will you will go to that permanent spot that you have. Yeah if you're awesome. successful yeah i'm going to throw it to jemima now who is happy to take yourself off mute um so jemima if you're comfortable to hello that, can yeah. you hear me yeah sweet hello hi hi uh my question's probably for tom i was wondering what does an average day look like and then also what's like an exceptional or different day that you'd experienced great question that's a great question jemima yeah um well, I suppose an average day is it's quite different depending on you know what team you're in and what directory you're based in. Um, but for me personally, so I um, work in whole of government communications and engagement, um, and I currently work in the social media space. So I create and and manage content on the ACT government's uh, Facebook, um, Twitter, LinkedIn pages, and then we've also recently taken carriage of a, an Instagram account. So it's the We Are CBR um, Instagram account. So make sure you guys follow us on all those channels. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's quite, it's quite nice plug and, and very <laughs> dynamic. Sorry, Larry. Nice plug. <laughs> yeah, I'm always plugging um, <laughs> the channels that I need content for. Um, but yeah, it can, I suppose, like your priorities can constantly change depending on if a, a big announcement pops up or particularly um, with the COVID era that we currently find ourselves within, um, there might be um, an outbreak in another jurisdiction. So then we quickly have to, to pivot to focus on that. Um, so yeah, adaptability is really important. Um, and uh, transparency is also quite important. It's like clear lines of communication, uh, are always needed um, in my space. Um, and collaboration is also very important. Um, working cohesively with your team um, is really important to get the, the best results. And what was what was the second part of your question again? Yeah, um, I was wondering, like, have you had any like particularly different days or you know, when something changed, what stood out? Uh, well, I suppose I sort of touched on it with, with COVID um, a bit and, and, you know, having to pivot to, to focus on pushing out um, public information, public health information. 
Um, but I have, like I remember at the start of last year, I think it was in, yeah, it must have been in March, uh, early March, late February, um, I was working on uh, the April edition of the Our Canberra newsletter. Um, and that's a newsletter that goes to every single household um, in the ACT. Um, and it's a major communications priority for the, for the Chief Minister. Um, and everything was just constantly changing. The public health advice was changing every, every minute. Um, and, you know, there was a six week delay between um, finalising the, uh, the April edition of our Canberra and it being delivered um, to, to Canberra households. So I think we were working on, I think we'd gotten up to like version 22. Um, and then we finally had it done and the next minute the, the Chief Minister's office said, no, we're going to scrap it um, because things are changing too much. So I think I was, this was like six o'clock on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> Um, and then they decided to go in a different direction. But that sort of thing doesn't happen terribly often. Um, but that's a, a, an example um, of, you know, things changing quite a bit. And, um, and a, a great example, actually, of, of the kinds of skills, you know, so we were talking earlier on, weren't we, about what are the sorts of skills you're looking for? Um, you know, as Tom's saying, that things like that do happen and they, they're not common. It doesn't happen all no, the time. Definitely. But, you know, that resilience to sort of say, right, well, I'm going to go home for the weekend and I'm just going to, and I'm going to come back on Monday morning and we'll take a deep breath and we'll all move through this, I think is a really important one. So we look at what we're looking for from our graduates is perhaps that, um, you know, yeah, that resilience as well as, as just able to say, OK, well, all right, that's changed and that decision has been made what can we do next and what can we do better mm. next time or, or what can, what's the next thing? Yeah. And I think you definitely learn a lot of positive things from those experiences too. Mm. Yeah. Get the learning out of it. Yeah. Thanks. While we're on the topic of resilience and you know, applications, all that sort of stuff, uh, I might throw to Michael next. Uh, Michael Turnbull had a question about um, the application process. There's a few questions here about that, so I might start with Michael. Okay. Um, All right, can you hear me? Yep. Hi, yes. Hello, Michael. Excellent. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. And I just had a quick question regarding the application process, and I just wanted to ask, is are applications purely based off your degree and your academic performance, or is previous work experience also taken into account? Absolutely. And um, they're, they're also based off, um, you know, your, um, your personal statement that you make. So, yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Tell us about tell us about um, your degree and, and, you know, what you learned and, and your skills and your technical skills. But, mm. um, yeah, t tell us about you. Tell us about your experiences. Tell us about why you want to um, come and work for us and what you believe your contribution could be, why, why you'd make a difference for us. Yeah, that's right. And I think yeah. that somebody asked a question about what would make a, an application stand out. But, you know, I think that's, yeah, it, it's that um, ability to really say, this is what this is what I can do for you. This is what I can bring. And, and I care about making a difference. And I think I can. And here's how. You know? Yeah. 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 Thank you very much for that clarification from the personal, like the personal goals aspect as well, because I'm pretty sure I, quite a few, if not everybody else here, has a few personal goals and having clarification on that would definitely help with our applications, I think. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Do you actually, Larry, while on top of applications as well, do you want to just describe what the recruitment process looks like? I, I know there's a couple of questions here. Um, Guan Ming actually asked on fire with questions today, um, again, about um, you know, what aptitude test do you use? A couple of questions here about whether it's an assessment center, but some on, um, and a few others. So maybe you just describe yep. what that looks like from application to offer. Absolutely. So um, our application pro uh, process is that you would submit your application um, using our online platform and that you um, we would then um, ask you to uh, submit some some documentation if that's possible uh, for you to for, to just to confirm some eligibility. 
um, for, for that. And so that's the first step, really. It's pretty standard. And then this year we are implementing some um, psychometric testing, which is something we haven't done before. Um, but we, we wanted to really um, be able to um, make the process uh, quite streamlined and quite and make that make it a lot quicker for applicants as well. So um, what we're doing is some um, basic literacy and numeracy um, tests and we'll also have a situational judgment test um, which has been developed in conjunction with our partners, uh, our recruitment partners but will be um, very informed by things that may actually happen in the course of your employment in the ACT government. The way we're doing that is to speak with our managers and our former graduates about things that, that have happened for them when they work here. So that's the sort of thing we'll be doing there. And then um, if you're successful at those stages, you'd be invited to um, a, a virtual assessment centre and that looks like uh, we've we've got we've done it for the first time virtually last year which was a great experience actually and what we wanted to make sure was that we haven't lost any of that personal contact um that we that we have had in previous years so we've always flown and bussed people in and done them live obviously last year that wasn't possible and still actually quite risky this year because of um because of live and changing situations um so we're doing it virtually again but what you'll notice um if you're successful in getting through to our assessment centers is that you will see our faces there will be current graduates there welcoming you and hanging out in the zoom um you know rooms to have a chat uh, with you and tell you about the program and field questions um, and the assessments uh, will be a, um, a possibly a written test which is um, like a work sample test and that's to just really um, test whether you are able to read and retrieve information and um, and put together a considered opinion. Um, the Then there is usually a, a panel interview and there will also be a group assessment, which is a, a small group of applicants. Um, you'll be divided into small groups rather and um, you'll be given a um, you know a problem to solve and asked to make a present. You'll have an hour and to talk and collaborate and then you'll as a group be asked to to give to to give a presentation on your um solution so um it's quite a range of um application sort of uh, measurements um i think and assessments rather and i think that um they're quite holistic and they really are designed to get the best out of people they're not scary and the, the the whole assessment process is quite inclusive we also have a um an inclusion officer so that if you do need um any help with any of the aspects of these um, applications then you can just reach out and we will have somebody there waiting to to help you yeah Fantastic. On the psychometric testing, to back it up a step, um, is there a particular system that you use? Like I know every organisation typically does a different system, whether it's Revalian or something. First like time that. we first time we are using it, so we are we are nailing that down. Yeah, that's course. a live situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, for anyone who's uh, there was a question about whether if it's the same as other organisations or we can use different previous results, I tend tend to be individually developed with each organization is the is the answer to that so make sure you're mm. just bringing yourself to the table is the main thing um Absolutely. i'm going to throw it to joshua now who's got two questions um but at least one of them talks to something about eligibility so i might get get him to um, speak if joshua if you're comfortable taking yourself off mute yeah sure uh, so I guess the first part of my question was, I'm currently enrolled in a PhD. I completed my honours year in 2018. Um, I'm looking to have to suspend the PhD for kind of family and care reasons. And I was wondering if having finished my honours year in 2018, if I'm still el eligible. Um, okay, that's, uh, that's quite a specific one. So the, um, so it would, it would depend on a couple of things. I think that the um, 
you would you would potentially be still eligible um, in our, sorry, the reason I'm, we have a we have a slightly adjusted eligibility criteria for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and people with disability. Um, so our eligibility for the, um, for, for the, for people who don't identify in those groups um, is that you have completed the, uh, your degree in the last uh, two years. And then for people who identify as people with disability or Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, we ask that you've completed that your degree in the last four years. In terms of your second part of the question, Joshua, did you want to? Uh, yeah, I guess, well, the second part of it was that I, I'm a history graduate um, and I have a particular interest in heritage, parks and wildlife and the museum sector and whether there's any room or an arts grad in such a competitive program? And is it possible to kind of find my way into those sectors through this grad program? Certainly possible. And I'd like to say that um, hello and high five as a fellow <laughs> history. Well, actually I'm an archeologist, but there we are. <laughs> um, so I think it's, um, I think it's it's certainly possible. If there wasn't, I'm I'm not aware of a role that has been identified for um, in the heritage um, in the heritage uh, section, but there are certainly there are certainly pathways and there is certainly mobility within the service. So even if you ended up in like an adjacent area um, as somebody who can write policy, and it sounds like lots of those can transferable skills I always say arts graduates are fabulous because we can think we can research we can write and we have those really and we can take a we can take an empathetic point of view as well so when we're designing policy we really don't we think from the perspective of the people that are going to be using it. So I think if what I would say is, yes, there's definitely room for your application. And I would be making the point about your transferability of skills in your application as well. Um, I'm not sure that there is it because what I've because you'll know um, that there is a competitiveness around um, heritage positions. Um, and and positions in museums and 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 um, that kind of heritage sector. However, there is always a place for people with really strong policy skills. And yes, if you were to be successful in the program in in something that was slightly adjacent to that, there is always an opportunity for you in the ACT public service to apply for another role when it comes up and you would be then have that network and have that wealth of experience behind you. Sure. Thanks a lot. It's a good point you make there, Larry, as well about the transferability of, of degrees, right? Like quite often, yeah. have, having graduated myself in 2018, you, you quite often hear this whole idea of, oh, arts, you know, you got an arts degree, you're going to work at Macca's or something like that. That's not the case, right? It's no. it, the challenge is, you know, articulate how transferable it is, but there's no such thing as a simple degree. Every degrees. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yes. Um, yeah. Cool. Next question here is, oops, sorry, I've lost my place. Um, we've asked about the application standing out. There's a question here from Bayan about a merit pool um, for top applications. Do you, is that something you do at the public service, Mary? Um, a merit pool in terms of, um, yeah. in, in terms of the technical way that we, that we make the, offers or yeah. or, or what? a question actually do you have a merit pool yeah. in case top applicants accept other offers and if so like how many how many graduates in your application process go into the merit pool so um we actually changed the way we recruited quite significantly last year we undertook a proactive recruitment um which meant that um everybody who rated as suitable or highly suitable in our, our process received offers so that was to do that was in recognition that um the public service uh needs graduates um throughout the year and that even if there wasn't role for a graduate to go into in february full-time permanent role um there would be throughout the year and we've now successfully placed those graduates who were in the talent bank so
um, that was that's the way we we work. We're looking at um, we're looking at potentially we've, we've got to evaluate that strategy, um, and but potentially that's what that's the kind of way we're working. Yeah. I've got a question back for Tom now, um, and it's a it's a good one. Um, again, from Kwan Ming. In, the question is: Hi, Tom. Which part of your work at ACT keeps you awake at night? Um, are there new areas that you didn't know before starting the graduate role? Um, and maybe if there's anyone else from the graduate reps, Larry and Jenny, who um, want to add to it, like what key words do you think you should know about before applying to a role in the public service? So sort of three questions there, but I'll start with you, Tom. What keeps you awake at night about your role? Oh, uh, well, nothing, luckily. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, Oh, it's a good question. Very interesting question. Um, no, it, like it is, it is very exciting to work, um, you know, for a public service organisation, um, and particularly if you're enthusiastic about the work that you're doing. Um, so, you know, there have been times where at night, um, to use your example, I've been thinking about, oh, you know, tomorrow I'm going to get to work and then focus on this X, Y, and Z, whatever it may be. Um, particularly in the uh, social media space, so with digital content, um, you know, just growing the following of a channel is really exciting to see because um, that demonstrates to you that um, the content you're creating um, is really resonating with your target audience, which, you know, is the ACT community. Um, so that in itself is really rewarding to see. Um, and I think was the second part of the question working in new different different sort of areas. Yes, the question was: Are there any new areas that you and are there any areas about your role that you didn't know um, before you started it? Yeah, well, I think you know, even doing the grad program, there was the three teams that I worked in. I never would have imagined I would have been doing that sort of work prior to um, starting with the ACTPS in the grad program. Um, so I studied just for a bit of context. I also did an arts degree coupled with business. Um, so my major was international relations. Um, and then, you know, I started off in a project officer role, which I didn't really expect to um, find myself in. But, you know, I'm learned some um, really amazing skills from that, transferable skills, which I took into my second rotation, to my third, and um, all those are really helpful to have as you progress through the public service. Um, and then even, um, you know, where I currently find myself two or three weeks ago, someone had to leave a different uh, part of the team, so then I was asked to, um, you know, help out with in that space. Um, so you're constantly asked to, to pivot and to work on different things. And um, as long as you keep an open mind, then um, you know, you're easygoing and do as much research as you can to do the best job you possibly can, then I think you're um, gonna really enjoy your experience within the public service. And finally, building off that last part of the question, which also is similar to what Shelley's asked is, is there anything you would have liked to know about the role before you started? Maybe common jargon or flexibility that you need, yeah, anything like that? There are a lot of acronyms that um, are used in the public service. Um, so yeah, a few of those would have been helpful to know prior to, to jumping in um, to the work. Um, i trying to think. I don't know, like I suppose, it's, it's good to learn all those things on the job as well. And that's oh. what makes it also quite exciting. Um, I think we, you know, we provide a, a pretty, well, it's a very comprehensive um, learning development program in terms of your diploma of government. Um, it's tailored, it's not a stock standard um, diploma either, and it's tailored for the ACT government um, and its environment, its legislation. So, um, what you might find um, that if you did a, a, a diploma in government for the federal public service is that you would be learning quite different 
um, quite different legislation, quite different um, specifics and acronyms. Um, but you know, as Tom said, like it, it, that's that's um, such a big part of your graduate program is actually learning on the job. And um, the, our our managers that welcome graduates into their teams are not expecting you to know um, mm. our acronyms and and know our um, ways of working when you when you first arrive here. Like that's that's what the program's for. It teaches you these things. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I'm conscious of time. We've gone a, a little bit over the allotted time, but I, I do know the team's happy to stay on for a little bit longer and to answer any further questions you might have. Um, so probably go for another five, 10 minutes or so, give it, depending on the amount of questions we've got coming through. So if you've got any questions that haven't been asked yet, whether I've missed them or anything like that, put them back in or maybe haven't had a chance to write them in yet, get them in now. I'm probably going to um, aim to avoid any ones that are about an individual circumstance. I'll leave that uh, for you to get in touch with the team more directly during the recruitment process. But if you have any general questions, now's the time uh, to get them in and we can sort of address them to the wider team. In fact, there's one here from William. Um, I'm not sure if you were happy to take this off of mute or not, but I can read it for you if... Sam? Not. Ooh, yeah. I just need to, oh, sorry. I just need to um, plug my laptop in. Would you just mind if I put myself on mute for a second and just do that? Two ticks. Yep, that's okay. Yep. Uh, this question is for Tom anyway, so that's, that's good timing. Um, the question is, um, have there been opportunities in your role to develop entirely new skills or interest areas? You know, example, if you started in the business stream, could you hypothetically move into a data analyst role, a legal role, uh, without necessarily having that background? Yeah, so I think um, in 2018, the structure of the program was a bit different. So it did afford me the opportunity to um, jump into a different area or a different stream because um, I was in a business commerce stream. So I worked in a research role and then I also um, was involved with project work um, and then uh, had the opportunity to be a data analyst. Um, but I think, you know, once you do finish the program as well, um, you do have the opportunity to expand out into different areas, areas of interest. Um, so, you know, I think it is important to develop professional relationships within the program and then um, people may say to you, you know, there is the opportunity to, to work in a, a space that you're interested in um, post uh, finishing the grad program. Did I answer that question specifically? No. <laughs> Um, sorry, Sam, um, I forgot to mention that I, I, I could have um, asked the question. I suppose my, my question, Tom, was, um, and, and you did mention, uh, answer it like, quite well, um, but say, like, if you had, to, uh, you know, throughout one particular role, you had developed a kind of burgeoning interest in say, data analytics or I don't know, science research and so forth, um, to your knowledge, like, are you aware of any opportunities to kind of upskill towards those areas that you might wish to kind of diversify in. Um, yeah, so that, that was the main gist of, of the role. I mean, the, the, the question, sorry. So you're talking about in terms of like uh, during the graduate program or after you finish the program? Um, I'd, I'd imagine probably like after the program, like once you've kind of settled into the, the APTTS. Um, but also similarly within the graduate program, like if you could talk on, on, on those. Yeah, so I think um, one of the main positives about the grad program is that um, you're provided with, uh, you know, extensive array of training opportunities. So um, when I did it in my year, we did, you know, everything from contract management to public policy, um, to, to finance for not accountants or that sort of thing. Um, and then, and that was, you know, great to have that knowledge, particularly since um, I do have a, um, you know, an inter primarily international relations communications background. Um, but then when you do finish the program, uh, depending on where you find yourself in whatever team you find yourself in, I suppose it's, um, you can have the conversation with your, your manager, um, you know, when you go through your performance development plan as to 
what your goals are and where you'd like to upskill. Um, and there might be opportunities for you to do so within the team or you might be able to um, work in another area of interest for two or three months, depending on um, the opportunities out there at the time. There's often... But yeah, like, um, well, well, Royster, really. There's often very short op short-term opportunities that come up and that you'll be able to take full advantage of as you, you know after you've um, completed the program absolutely um, and in terms of in terms of developing your uh, specific interests and skill and if you have a if you have a, a sort of you know a light bulb moment and you suddenly fall in love with the, the budget cycle as one of our graduates did <laughs> recently um, no. <laughs> they moved from a role in climate change policy into treasury because um, I mean obviously that that role was there for for her it was a free it was um, it was available and she made a great case and at the end of her program year she said look I've had a, such a fantastic rotation there is a there is a role here a permanent ongoing role and um, you know they said we'd love to have you and the other area said well we don't want to keep you if you don't, you know, if you want to be somewhere else. And so they worked it out and that's what, they, so things are available like that. Yes. Yes. Thanks, um, Tom. That was very, um, quite clarifying. Actually. Thank you. Yeah. And I remember um, at the time in 2018, the Deputy Director General of Workforce Capability and Governance said to us, you know, I encourage you to um, work in as many different teams as possible. Mm. Mm. If that's, if that's what you want to do. Now, there's a couple of questions here that are a bit individual circumstances, so I might generalise it a little bit. There's a couple of questions here about they've got a specific degree and they're unsure what stream they should apply to. Is there any way they should can do we research? We will make as much decision? clarifying. We will, we will make as much clarifying um, sort of substreams and we will note the qualifications that you can have um, in when we do our communication when we release those streams um, probably just prior to at the applications opening um, and we will make it really really clear what to what what to apply for for which kind of degree um, but if you do have a question and you're not sure and there is some information missing please let us know because if you're asking it other people will be asking it as well so we have a graduate um, talent uh, email inbox and that um, address is also on our website so just shoot us an email if it's not clear from the from the information we post um, like I said that workforce planning information is is um, just being finalized and so we will release our streams really soon but if you can't find the information you're looking for shoot us an email and it will help us improve the information that we put up as well as being able to answer your question perfect i think there's one probably last question i might go to hopefully everyone can get a bit of a benefit from and hopefully that helps everyone have their individual degrees they're looking for um, mm -hmm. and yes that last question will we see a recording yes you will be i'll be em we'll be emailing that out um, later this week, most likely. Um, but the question is from Hayden, what are some common mistakes to avoid during the application process? Um, Larry, um, what you? Yeah. Okay, uh, maybe Jenny, you could think of one um, as well for me. Um, so I think probably hmm, mistakes to avoid. I think probably um, in your applications, Skipping, we see quite a lot of people skipping the um, the personal statement question, uh, which is, you know, a generic, it's, it's not a generic, but it's like a, a personal statement, which actually is your chance to, sh to tell us about you and your experience and how you're going to come and make a difference in our organisation, why we should hire you. So we get sometimes people just copy and paste from every other application they've put in and they don't tailor it to the ACT public service and and, and it, you can tell it's quite a very generic response or they just skip the um, the, the, the process entirely. They, they skip the question completely. So um, avoid doing that. And I think as well, um, just be just be kind to yourselves you know um allow yourself if you if you're successful in getting to the assessment center um you know give yourselves time to get online in the morning and test your internet connection and and all of those things so you're not flustered 
and um, you know if uh, don't don't overanalyze as well um, just come be you um, and and do the best you you can show us show, we, we, we're all here and we're all wanting you to be fantastic candidates so just know that um, you know it's a it's a very safe process it's a very safe space <laughs> yeah Jenny, anything to add to that at all? Look, like Larry was saying, I think the big thing is to be you. We're a really diverse workforce. We service a diverse community um, and we need you to be you so as we know what you are and what you can provide, what you can do for the ACTPS. Perfect. Well, I reckon if there's anything further to add, we might um, end it there, to be honest. Um, so I'd like to firstly thank uh, Larry, Jenny and Tom for their time this afternoon. It's been definitely been very insightful. I know I learned a lot, so hopefully the rest of you did as well. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for attending as well. It's been a great session, really great questions. I, I, um, I know uh, ACT team took a lot out of it as well, so it's been, it's been great. Um, keep an eye on your emails. We'll definitely be letting you know once those applications open be able to apply through Grad Australia or, or straight through to the website as well. That will be coming in the coming weeks to a month or a month or so. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely make sure you, you, you know, keep track of that one. Um, and yeah, last but not least, I think we'll get yeah, say thank, thank, thanks again. And um, yeah, thanks for the great day. Thanks everyone. Thank you. And best of luck. Bye bye. Yes. Yeah, good best luck. of luck. <laughs>